Welcome everybody. Today's lesson is another one on the golden ratio. As you know, I'm obsessed about the magnificence of the phi ratio, and especially the origin of the phi ratio is the Fibonacci sequence. And um, I believe that the Fibonacci sequence is, is indeed a true superstructure. And if you want to study sacred geometry, like I have for 40 years, I have been studying Fibonacci codes for four decades now. And this one here that I'm going to reveal to you is called the 60 code. We looked at the 24 code when we took away number nine and it revealed 24 numbers that infinitely repeat and they all added up to 108. It was a 108 code, but this code here is a 60 code and it's based on taking the number 10 from every Fibonacci number. So this is a clock of modulus 10. So it's mod 10 Fibonacci and it's going to reveal 60 digits that keep repeating forever and ever. So we start from 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. We keep adding 3 and 5 is 8, 5 and 8 is 13. But when we get to 13, we must take away 10. So 10 from 13 is a 3. The next number is 13 plus 8, or 8 plus 13 is 21. Take away 10 and another 10 will leave a 1. So we're looking at the final digits, the end digits, and these 60 numbers repeat forever. Just a bit of number theory. The, if you notice the four zeros, there's, there's two zeros here and two zeros there. They form a cross. That's really interesting. And every fifth Fibonacci number, 0, 5, 5, 0, 5, 5, 0, 5, 5, 0, 5, 5, 5. Every fifth Fibonacci number is divisible by 5. And five, as you know, is the pentacle, the five-pointed star, the, the shape of every protein in our body. Every cell in our body is sacred geometry. And the other bit of number theory is that if I take any number like three and I go through the center, the opposite of number is seven. So three and seven add up to ten. Here I have a four. Four, the opposite pair is a six. Four and six is ten here. Two and eight is ten. So every opposite pair, the 30 pairs, all add up to ten. So there's a lot of beautiful um, symmetry in here, but I just want to show you what I call the pentahexa that's disguised and hidden inside the 60 code. So let me take this off. So you can see here, um, you can see here that I'm going to reveal um, some more secret hidden knowledge within the Fibonacci sequence, the 60 code. So, um, so you can see here that I did this as a template first. So you can see here, we can see the four crosses. I've drawn in the cross there, the four zeros. And what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight a sequence called 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So as you know, they're the even numbers. And just observe that these numbers are going in order. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 0. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2 to a 4 to 6 to an 8 and back to where I started from. So the reason why that's important is because that's called unicursal. Unicursal means that when you, um, unicursal means one line. So we're going to start from the zenith, the top point there. I'm going to go down to this two here. So um, I'll do it left-handed so I can see the line. So I just want to show you, that's the first line. And the second line, we're going to go from two to four. And then from four, we're going to go across to six. Two, four, six. And then we're going to go to eight, from six to eight. And then the last one, we're going to go eight, back to where we started from. So what you're looking at is, is a very intelligent, highly sophisticated circuitry. So we want to apply this to our future technology because we're looking here at the what we call coherence in our technology and design. So, so we can see here that the pentagram is embedded within the 60 code, but not only that, that's just one of 12 other pentagrams that I could draw. If I just suddenly said to you, I'll just do it in a faint pence, a chalk. If I went from here one, to three, so I'll just draw that in. So there's a th one to three, and then I'm gonna go to 
the five, and I'm going to go from the five to the seven, and from the seven to the nine here, and from the nine I'm going to go back to this one here. Can you see that what I've drawn very softly is another pentagram? Or this is actually, actually, so that's a pentagon. So we drew the unicursal pentagram, which means a star, when we went 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. But when I just, now, I connected the odd numbers. I went from 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. It actually created a pentagon. I mean, I find that absolutely beautiful. This is, um, this is not random. This is nature's genius. This is the mind of God. This is creation that is timeless, universal, and forever. This is the essence of sacred geometry. So sacred doesn't mean in a religious sense. Sacred means that which is permanent. And that's a quote from Robert Lawler. He says that um, sacred means being permanent. So, so these pentagrams and pentagons are forever encoded in this 60 code. And what's 60 about? Why do we have 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour? Because these are time codes. This could be the future mathematics that opens up the stargates for time travel. And we have to give credit to the um, Babylonians like three, 4,000 years ago who gave us the 60 code and they introduced to the world the origin of the zero, like the Vedas. They also had a concept of zero, but so did the Babylonians when they worked with the 60 code. And the other code that we talked about before was the 24 code. So the numbers 24 and 60 are both the numbers of time. And just to conclude this, I just want to show you that not only is the five-pointed star important because every time we draw the star within the star, this pentagram star that I'm drawing now is reducing at the rate of 0.618. So 0.618 is the elbow doesn't bend at halfway at 0.5. At the point at a bit more than 0.5 is 0.618. Everything about the human body, even where our phalanges, if this is one, this is 1.618. If this is 1.618, this is 2.618 or phi cubed. So everything about the human body canon is the golden ratio. So if I was to draw another star within the star, this star here is going to reduce at the rate of 0 0.618, 0 0.618. So this is a stairway to heaven. This is a caduceus. This is the ultimate phi scaling ratio that connects or bridges the macrocosm to the microcosm, the universe to the atoms. So we know how important the five-pointed star is. It's a nest of ratio that's a geometric um, mean but to complete the story of five we need to link it to the six so if we can find a hexagon in here the hexagon's important because when we have the five there's a pentagon here and as it links to the six the hexagon this is a soccer ball it's a it's, it's called um the truncated icosahedron so if we took an icosahedron that has 20 triangles and sliced off those tips there, we end up with pentahexa, pentagons and hexagons. So this is kind of the sphericality of what we call DNA molecule. So the soccer ball that we've been kicking around has an affinity to the, the matrix of our creation. So let's find the hexagon here. And remember I said to you originally, when you join the four zeros there, that from there, to there, Whoop, that wasn't a very good line. So when, when we join the central cross, um, we, we can now join every number that is divisible by five. So I'm gonna, I'll just do this by hand. So um, I'm gonna start from the top here, the zenith. So we're starting at the same point where the pentagram started, and we're gonna go to this point here. So that's one, and I'm gonna, so that's zero, five, and we're gonna connect this five. And then we're going to connect to zero here. And then we're going to connect to this five here. So this is a sequence called zero, five, zero, five, five, zero, five, five. And we go from this five back to the origin. So you can see here that within this matrix of 60, infinitely repeating 60 numbers, there is a hexagonal relationship between all the zeros and the fives. And that, that's the connection between the six and the five because in the hexagon, we're linking everything that's got to do with the five. So I've always been interested in the relationship between penta 
and hexa, the five and the six. So by constructing the triangle, then the square, we start examining the five and the six. So sacred geometry is a journey from the triangle to the square, pentagon to hexagon, the three to the four to the five to the six, and thus our journey to infinity.